Hi everyone and welcome to Newegg TV. My name is Paul. Today I'm bringing you another video on the new NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 Ti GPU that has just recently launched. Today we're going to be taking a closer look at the MSI Power Edition version of the 660 Ti. This is the OC Edition. It's factory overclocked and uh, it's pretty awesome. Let's take a closer look at the retail box. First off, you get a three-year warranty from MSI if you purchase this card in the U.S., Canada, or Mexico. This is the overclocked edition, and if you're familiar with the GeForce GTX 600 series, they have a feature called Boost Clock, which is sort of an automatic GPU overclock. So each card is going to have a listed base clock and a listed boost clock. And for the stock 660 Ti's, that would be 915 and 980, respectively, for the uh, core clock and the boost clock. For this particular card manufacturer overclock, it's 1,119, sorry, 1,019 and 1,097. So 1,019 megahertz on the core clock, and it will boost up to a minimum of 1,097 megahertz, assuming the uh, thermal environment permits, of course, which is why you sh should make sure you have good airflow in your case. This video card is the Power Edition. Uh, MSI has sort of renamed their video cards, so you might be familiar with Twin Frozer, which is their very popular popular series of aftermarket coolers. They've had a lot of, a lot of their different video cards. Uh, this does feature the Twin Frozer 4 thermal design, which is a very well-designed uh, cooler. I can vouch for that because I've already done some uh, benchmark testing on this video card. Uh, so Power Edition, you get two gigabytes of GDDR5 memory that's going to be running at the uh, stock speed of uh, 6,008 megahertz, uh, effective uh, memory speed. Uh, you get PCI Express Gen 3.0 compatibility, so that gives you effectively double the bandwidth of PCI Express Gen 2. Also a big boost in efficiency, uh, but don't worry if you're running a PCI Express Gen 2 or 2.1 motherboard, it is still compatible, you can still plug it in, and it's not going to be a really huge difference from Gen 2 to Gen 3. Uh, you also get DirectX 11 support, just like all the uh, 600 series GPUs, and uh, you also get triple overvoltage and enhanced PWM design. And what does that mean? Well, the PWM design is a power delivery design uh, on the video card itself. So here we can see military class three components. Triple over, over voltage uh, is a feature you can access using the MSI Afterburner software utility, which you can use to overclock your video card, also to control your fan speeds and memory clocks and all that good stuff. Um, so here you can actually control core voltage, memory voltage, and aux voltage, which is PLL for your power delivery. On the right side here, military class components, highly conductive capacitors, high C caps, super ferrite chokes, uh, solid caps, 10 years ultra long lifespan. Uh, there's a little choke comparison chart right there and everything for efficiency and current 10% and 30% improvements respectively. Uh, enhanced PWM design, some more info on MSI Afterburner. Uh, media's comment to Twin Frozer Thermal Design. Oh, here's some, some uh, comments here from Kit Guru, Guru and Hard OCP. Uh, lauding MSI for their design of their video cards. Uh, apart from that, we have two 80 millimeter PWM fans, multiple heat pipes, uh, high density heat sink, nickel plated copper base. Oh, this is interesting down here in the lower right. Dust removal technology. Spinning the fan in reverse for 30 seconds upon system startup helps remove dust buildup on the heat sink and ensure optimal cooling performance. So it's actually going to run the fans backwards right when you start out, knock some dust out of the uh, out of, out of the fans. Hey, that's a pretty cool feature. Let's flip over for some more specs on the back and then I will, I promise I'll get into the box as well. So uh, two, two gigs GDDR5, you get GPU boost as previously mentioned. You get 600 series features such as TXAA and FXAA, which are post-processing anti-aliasing technologies, uh, which really hit the GPU a lot less hard than, for instance, MSAA, um, which is uh, used in a lot of games. But so if you're uh, going to play a game that, fe that en enables TXAA or FXAA, you can get some really pretty looking gameplay uh, with a much less performance hit on the video card. Adaptive V-Sync is a pretty cool technology. It will turn V-Sync on or off depending on the refresh rate of your monitor and the uh, frame rate that you're getting in the games, and that's going to minimize uh, tearing or stuttering. NVIDIA Surround, you can actually power up to four monitors off of a single video card. You can use three of those for gaming. Uh, these are your connectors right there. DirectX 11 Physics, 3D Vision, SLI ready. You can actually do three-way SLI with the 660 Ti. NVIDIA CUDA technology, PCI Express 3.0, OpenGL 4.2. Is that good enough? Yeah, that's good enough. Let's look in the box. Inside the box, we have some accessories. They're all over here. Let me pull them out for you guys. We have, well, there's the video card too, of course. 
Sorry, these are being evasive. All right, so uh, hardware-wise, we have a couple power splitters, or combiners, I should say. Uh, each of these will take two Molex plugs from your power supply and convert it into a six-pin PCI Express power connector. Uh, the card does require two six-pin PCI Express power connectors. Uh, MSI and NVIDIA are recommending for the 660 a minimum of 450 watt power supply for the card in your entire system. Um, you can always go above that if you want to have some extra headroom, uh, but that's what's recommended at minimum. Uh, you have a adapter right here. This is a uh, digital DVI connector, which exists on the back of the card. You can convert that to a 15-pin uh, D-sub connector here, which is for an anal analog VGA signal. Um, pretty much if you're using an older monitor, you can use that. It only works with one of the two DVI connectors on the video card itself, so uh, I'll show you guys which one you'll want to plug that in if you are going to be using that adapter. This is an MSI Quick User's Guide. It is a generic guide for video card installation in lots of different languages, so if you're not familiar with that, you can check that out. You can also check out our How to Build a Computer video if you want more info on that. Uh, you get the MSI Afterburner Utility as well as Driver Disc right here. This is the disc that I, will, uh, I, I have been using to benchmark, uh, so the drivers uh, that I use for a benchmark since this is pre-release at the time of the filming. Uh, use the drivers off the disc because they don't release the drivers for the video card until the video card goes out. And I didn't want to use beta drivers, so that being said, you also get a specific 660 Ti PE series manual right there with some more information specifically related to this card. And uh, there you have it. Next up is the video card. So here's the 660 Ti Power Edition OC, and as you can see, you have the Twin Frozer logo right there because this is the Twin Frozer 4th Edition from MSI. Uh, they've sort of switched up the color scheme. It's now black and blue as far as the uh, shroud on the fan goes. You got your two 80, 80 millimeter fans right there, which are going to be directing air down towards the aluminum fins that reside below it. So you'll notice you have a big array of aluminum fins going down the entire length of the card. We also have these nickel plated copper heat pipes. So you got two smaller ones in the middle, two fatter ones. I believe these are six millimeters and eight millimeters for those heat pipes. Uh, essentially those are gonna be uh, getting a lot closer to the GPU at the center, transferring heat out to the aluminum fins, and then the fans project air across those fins to disperse the heat. This is an open air design, so the uh, heat will be ejected inside your computer case. Um, there's varying schools of thought when it comes to the design of aftermarket coolers. You have the shroud design, which covers the whole card and ejects more out the back. Those cards typically tend to run a little bit hotter. This card was running very cool in most of the tests. The max temperature I saw was about uh, 64, 65 degrees Celsius. Uh, so it did stay very cool. Um, but again, that is a trade-off depending on the cooling design that you prefer. But there's lots of options out there. Uh, let me show you the back of the card. This is, uh, has a brown PCB that MSI has been using for quite some time. This is a custom PCB. It is not the uh, reference board that you'll see with some of the other uh, stock models of the 660 Ti. But they have mounted the cooling solution with Phillips head screws, so you can remove that if it comes to it, if you need to clean it out or anything like that. Uh, here at the top is, of course, your PCI Express connector, which has a plastic cap on it, which doesn't want to come off, so I'm just going to leave it there. Anyway, PCI Express Gen 3 compatible, of course. On the other side of the PCB here at the top, you have your two SLI connectors. Again, three-way SLI support as of the filming of this video, similar to the 670 at launch, although they upgraded the 670 to four-way SLI compatibility through drivers after that. Uh, here's a look. Wait, I wanted to flip to this side. Uh, if you have the card installed in your computer case, in most computer cases, this is the side you'll be looking at. So you'll see the MSI logo as well as the cooling solution. And then uh, some specs. The GPU right there beneath those uh, transistors at the bottom there is the GK104 codename GPU. If you've heard that before, it's because it's the same GPU that was used in the 680 as well as the 670. Uh, one of the big differences from the 680 to this one is the SMX units, which is sort of the groups of processing units within the GPU. Uh, you get seven in the 670 and the 660 Ti uh, versus eight that you get in the 680. Uh, you still get 3.54 billion transistors uh, that live all in there, of course. And you get uh, most of the other features that you would get with the 670, including the, um, the memory frame buffer, um, really, the biggest difference between this card, the 660 Ti, and the 670 is going to be the memory interface. 
The 670 and 680 have four 64-bit memory controllers, which gives you a 256-bit memory interface. This one has three uh, memory controllers, 64-bit uh, memory controllers, which gives you a 192-bit memory interface. Um, so really, that's the primary difference between the two cards. Uh, power requirements are the same. So here's your two 6-pin PCI Express power connectors. It's a 150-watt TDP, TDP card, uh, which is really quite low for the amount of power that you get from this video card. And uh, another thing I wanted to point out about the actual construction, because I, I have to say I really liked it, and it's nice when I actually get some time to test these cards because then I can say, ooh, I like this. Uh, but So right here you'll notice this black bracket, and that's uh, actually bolted directly to the PCI bracket, and that's really where you're going to have the most amount of security. That's where the bracket bolts to your case. That extends down via this little arm right there, and then it actually goes across a large portion of the PCB between the cooler and the PCB itself. Uh, so it's doing a couple different things. It's providing some enhanced rigidity and you can see the edge of it right here poking up and that's really when the card's hanging in your, excuse me, hanging in your PCI slot. Uh, it's going to make the, uh, the circuit board more rigid. It's, it's not, you're not going to have to suffer from the droop that you get sometimes with heavier cards. It's also got thermal tape or thermal pads uh, that are providing contact between that bracket and uh, some key components, so such so the uh, MOSFETs, which are down here at this end, also the memory modules are covered um, in certain areas. So that's going to provide a bit of additional cooling on those key components. Keep those cooler, it gives you better overclocks, uh, and also well, keeps the card in cooler in general, which means your fans are going to spin uh, more slowly, and it means you're going to have less noise, which could interrupt your gaming. And of course, we cannot forget the video outs down here at the PCI bracket. Uh, so we have two DVI outputs. Again, uh, one is uh, DVI D, which is digital only. That's the top one right here. Does not have the analog outputs that would be in the little plus shape, as you can see in the lower one. Uh, both of these will support 2560 by 1600 resolution if you're using the digital DVI connection. Uh, if you're going to use that analog connector uh, that I showed you, the adapter that is in the accessories, you'll want to use it in the lower DVI. Uh, slot right there. Uh, you can support uh, monitor outputs out of all four of these at the same time. You can use three of them for gaming. The fourth is a companion monitor, so you can use that to pull up websites or uh, chat program or anything like that. Uh, you also, of course, have the HDMI output as well as DisplayPort 1.2. And then you got a little bit of a, of a gap right here for some air to exhaust out. Next up here is a quick measurement of the cards. So uh, this stays at a very decent length of, I'm going to say, less than 10 inches at the longest point where the shroud actually sticks out a little bit here at the end. You might notice this sticking out a little bit too. That's just a cable, so that's flexible. You can tuck it in uh, wherever you best see fit if you are short on space in your computer case. And uh, finally, I'm going to move into some benchmarks because I did have a chance to benchmark this card. Just to give you guys a point of reference, we are continuing to beat up on the GTX 6, I'm sorry, the GTX 580, the former uh, flagship single GPU card from the NVIDIA 500 series. The card we're actually putting this one up against is an overclocked triple slot cooler version of the 580, so um, this is just going to give you some points of reference, and here are the benchmarks.
So there you have it, guys. As you can see, the uh, 660 Ti, at least this one in particular, uh, kind of trades blows with the 580. Uh, definitely is able to match that performance. Maybe not quite as up to the task in uh, heavy anti-aliasing, especially MSAA tasks, and that is largely due to the memory interface, uh, which is a little bit narrower. But again, this card is uh, at least a couple hundred dollars less in the initial pricing than the 580 was, and of course, uses less power, creates less noise, and it's it's well, it's newer. Anyway, uh, that's going to wrap it up for our video. Once again, this has been the MSI Power Edition of the NVIDIA GeForce GTX 660 Ti. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. If you enjoyed today's video, you can head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. And, of course, don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.